What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Dennis and Dirty Two live and Dirty Two Basketball HQ. Yeah, and I'm very excited. I'm excited. I'm back with another video. In this video, I'll be looking at Kenya versus Mali. You know, this is a these are two teams that are grouped in Group C. And uh, without further ado, let me just get into it real quick. You know the drill. Make sure to hit the subscribe subscribe button, turn on notification posts. Make sure to smash the like button. Make sure to comment what you think about the video. Make sure to comment anything. Make sure to watch the video till the end. And um, without further ado, man, let me just get into it. So Kenya is a team that participated in Group B. Uh, and in, out of six games, you know, Kenya won two games, lost four games, uh, had a plus minus of a minus 82, uh, finished third in Group B. You know, this is a group that had Senegal, Angola, Kenya and Mozambique so you can see Kenya finished number three and um, not much to say there so Kenya only got two wins Kenya is my country uh, if, if if you're asking and um, let me just go through the games that they played real quick so this was late November 2020 I know I pre covered this in my previous video when I was looking at Kenya versus Nigeria and also Kenya versus Cote d'Ivoire but uh, hey let me just go through them real quick so I, I can just give my two cents on them and uh, we move forward so Senegal versus Kenya, this is a blowout for Senegal. Uh, Senegal just blew the hell out of Kenya, 92 to 54. Kenya stood no chance, especially in the fourth quarter. There was the infamous two-point quarter where Senegal outscored Kenya in the fourth quarter, 34 to two points, and um, the rest is history. I mean, the second day, um, Kenya matched up with Angola. Angola beat the living life out of Kenya, 83 to 66, another back-to-back -back blowout win. And uh, it was looking pretty bleak for Kenya because, you know, I mean, it was so embarrassing until the Kenya Morans could, didn't even report on these games. They didn't even post it on their social media. It was that bad because, you know, that time we were down 0-2 and um, there, were, there were speculations. We didn't know if, you know, the next game we're going to lo lose or win. So that was the situation. Then the third day, Kenya played with Mozambique. You know what did happen. Kenya beat Mozambique 79 to 62 but the game was pretty close Kenya only the thing is Kenya did not make any changes in their game in this game the only the, the only thing was that their shot was dropping that's the only difference they never made any changes they just played the same way and uh you know they just won this game so Mozambique just had an off night I can just give credit to you know uh, a little credit to Kenya you know their shot was dropping but they didn't do anything different. And um, then the second half of the qualifiers, 19th February 2021, this was early this year, Kenya matched up with Senegal once again. Uh, Senegal has Kenya's number, so this game ended 69-51 in Senegal's favor. You know, this wasn't a blower, but it was a, almost a near blower. This game was neck and neck in the first half between Kenya and Senegal, but in the second half, Kenya imploded and, um, you know, Senegal just pulled away with the win. And uh, in the next day, Kenya matched up with Angola. This is the game that Kenya pulled off a uh, game winner, a uh, buzzer beater, you know, in the late in the game. And um, Kenya won this game by one point. I mean, 74 to 73. I never saw that coming, but I uh, give credit to a credit to, you know, Kenya, you know, despite the fact that they blew eight points in two minutes, they were able to pull off a game winner, and uh, yeah, man, the win game. When the win went to Kenya, and it, it stamped their ticket to qualifying there for basket because you know Mozambique, who had yet to win a game, and um, they were just 0 for five at the time. But when Kenya, in the next day, Kenya matched up with Mozambique, Mozambique uh, blew us out, 71 to 44. Actually, it was a pretty embarrassing game for Kenya. This is a game that I'll never forgive Kenya for, and. Uh, this is a this is an abomination. Nobody reported on this game as much. They swept it under the rug. They just uh, you know said that just because he qualified, didn't need win to they need to win a game. In the first quarter, it was pretty good, but in the second, third, and fourth quarter, you know Kenya just you know gave up and quit and let Mozambique drop seventy one points out of forty four points for Kenya. So I can say this is Kenya's quit game. Although they they excuse. That they keep kept on saying is oh you know we're not gonna face Mozambique again so this is a pretty bad excuse and uh, it showed it goes to show that these guys 
in Kenya in the Kenya Morans team don't even acknowledge their flaws. They would rather do they would rather sit for mediocrity in this game at, at aside from accountability and I'm here to hold you guys accountable because if you guys don't play well you'll have a problem with me. You'll be dealing with me. So with that, with that being said, you know, it rounded out the rec- Kenya's record to 2 and 4. The first win with Mozambique, and the second win with Angola. So we lost four games, only won two games. So 2 and 4 record. There's a, it wasn't pretty it wasn't good at all. I was expecting at least to have a slash in record of a 3 and 3 because we had what it takes to beat Mozambique in the last game, but we quit. And uh, that that was the issue. That's the issue that I have. So without further ado, let me just get to the team comparison real quick between Kenya and Mali. So in two-point field goals, you can see Mali leads in this stat 42.6% from the field as opposed to Kenya's 38.6% from three, uh, from, from two-point field goal, excuse me. I mean, from the two-point field goals, Kenya can't be able to, you know, even score a basket because, you know, we've got guys like, you know, Bushio Mukota who blow open layups. You've got guys who don't even know how to use the shot clock. You have guys who don't even know how to use any... They don't know even how to move off ball so that we can be able to, you know, create good looks. The guys who doesn't don't even know how to shoot mid-range jumpers. That's the problem. So Kenya and the two-point field goals, they can't finish layups. They can't, you know, um, finish uh, basic offensive sets. They, they don't even know how to execute any sets because if you can see... If you see their games real quick... I mean, if you make sure that you see all their games at close range, you'll see Kenya. Uh, they have they they have very much tunnel vision, especially in their stars. I mean, they do they don't know how to, what to do, and especially even in the three point field goals, you can see they're trailing as well. And mind you, Mali shot thirty two point five percent from three, as opposed to Kenya's twenty four point five percent. So you can see there's a difference between field goals. And two point field goals and three point field goals. Kenya is trailing, and this is very, very bad. But when it comes to the free throws, although we shot more a higher percentage than Mali, we still struggle. We are supposed to be shooting at least 80, 75 to 80 percent from, from the charity stripe. But Mali is struggling in that stat. Maybe we can be able to send them to the line, but it's not a guarantee they're going to shoot poorly again. In the offensive, defensive, and total rebounds, you can see. Um, Kenya leads in all of all leads in the rebounds department, but not by a wide margin. You can see it's only like a two point two rebound differential in total rebounds, a one di- point. It's a one differential in the defensive rebounds, and also a two rebound differential in the offensive rebounds. So you can see as much as Kenya leads in those stats, it's not by a wide margin. And also in the then moving on to the assist department, you can see Kenya trails in the assist department because they don't know how to share the rock. Which is really, really hard. Like you know, the overall team chemistry. No players are not be able are not able to you know get them looks because they don't know each other and they don't know how to find each other on the court because you expect someone pass is passed to the ball. They just stand there. They know they're not moving. They're not be able. They're not able to you know um, make make an offense flow. And this is what is really crippled. And that's why uh, teams like Angola and Senegal and actually the last game the Mozambique. They manipulated that and um, they put us in jail and they won those games. So Mali know how to share the ball, 16.3 assists as opposed to Kenya's 13.8 assists. In the steals department, you can see although we lead in that stat, 9.7 steals as opposed to Mali's 8.8 steals, Kenya, it's, it's only like a one steal differential. So it's a pretty tight knit between Mali and Kenya because, you know, um, Mali also has the ability to even beat you to offset some power that Kenya may have or Kenya may have the ability but you can see in the major stats Mali is leading and also in the blocks department also in the blocks department as much as Mali is leading it's 5.3 blocks as compared to Kenya's 4.0 blocks so it's only like a one block differential so both teams are like somehow equally matched but uh I'll, I'll, I don't know at this point let me just go through the you know the stats real quick. So, as much as Mali knows how to block, I don't know if they're able to you know increase the pace and the tempo of the rebounds. But Kenya really slacks at the, the at the defensive rebounds and also offensive rebounds because you know the other teams like um, 
Angola and Senegal were able to, you know, hack the system that Kenya had because they knew how to, you know, get crash the boards. They knew how to get to they they know they knew how to get second chance points. So hopefully Mali is able to cash in on this. In the fast break points, you can see uh, Kenya's leading 13.2 fast break points as opposed to Mali's, but 12.3 uh, fast break points. But you can see Kenya. It's not it's not by a wide margin as opposed to the way Mali. Mali shoots better in two point and three point field goals. They have a higher field goal percentage than Kenya, so I expect Mali to, you know, even if they're trailing in fast break points, they can be able to, you know, compensate that with their shooting. Points in the paint, it's only a one point differential between Kenya and Mali. Twenty seven point seven points in the paint for Mali as opposed to twenty six point zero points in the paint for Kenya. So you can see Kenya it's only they they're just trailing there. And so points of the bench can see Mali leads in that stat by like three points as opposed to Kenya's 21.3 points so you can see Mali had 24.7 points off the bench and Kenya 21.3 points so you can see okay both teams are just trailing at points of the bench as compared to their other group mates um Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire I mean Kenya and Mali seem to be equally matched in terms of flaws in terms of uh, mistakes so this is the real this is the only battle that Kenya has or Mali has that stand stands a chance of winning as opposed to Kenya matching up with Nigeria or Kenya matching up against Cote d'Ivoire so I don't feel like you know Kenya has the ability to beat to compete with you know elite teams rather like they can only compete with like middle level teams like Mali and I also no no shade to Mali but it's still, still the same thing that holds true I don't think that Mali will be able to, you know, beat a team like Nigeria, given the fact that, you know, in the last two meetings with Nigeria, Mali was handing two L's, and um, they don't have what it takes to beat a team like Nigeria, even a team like Cote d'Ivoire. And the same thing applies to Kenya. So this is just a battle of the, you know, the guys who are below the elite. So that's what I can say about this matchup. But without further ado, let me go to Mali. You know, Mali was the same group with Nigeria, as I mentioned earlier. No, Mali finished third, same record as Kenya. Six games played, two and four, two wins, four losses, plus minus of a minus twenty nine. And uh, you know, uh, th these guys just you know, um, just <laughs> just finished third, and uh, they didn't do anything spectacular. But let's just go to the games that these guys played, just to gain some context of what happened. So Mali in November, late November twenty twenty, they matched up with Rwanda. Um, Rwanda. Rwanda fell to Mali. You know, Mali won that game, seventy to sixty-four. Then the second day, South Sudan matched up with Mali. You know, South Sudan beat Mali seventy-seven to sixty-four. I mean, both games were pretty close. I mean, then um, Nigeria matched up with Mali. They delivered the worst blow, the worst beating Mali ever got, which was uh, ninety-one to sixty-eight, which was pretty embarrassing for Mali to go out like that. I mean, they were just blown out. That's round out the first half of the FIBA Afro Basket qualifiers. Then the second half, Mali matched up with Rwanda again. You know, Mali was not losing to Rwanda, so Mali beat Rwanda 76 to 51. Then the next day, Mali matched up with South Sudan. This time, South Sudan didn't pull away as much, but they got the win 69 to 65. So Mali, you know, cut the lead, and uh, South Sudan only won by four points. And in the last game, you know, N Nigeria was on that unbeaten streak. And uh, they're not going to lose this game to Mali. So they handed Mali another blowout. Um, Nigeria blew out Mali with 20 points. This game ended 76-56. to 56, Rounding out the Mali's record to 2-4. and four. And uh, yeah, man. But in this game, I'll give the edge to Mali. Because Mali, um, you know, they shoot better than Kenya. They shoot better than... Um, they shoot better from 2 and 3. And I feel like, you know, Mali has what it takes to, you know, beat a team like Kenya, you know. In their plus minus, you know, they have a plus. They have a plus minus of a minus twenty nine, as opposed to Kenya, who have a plus minus of a minus eighty two. That show goes to show you that Kenya is pretty inefficient. As much as these guys had similar records, Kenya is pretty inefficient, and uh, they need to improve on that. Okay, so Kenya has had a FIBA World rank of one twelve, and Mali had has a FIBA World rank of seventy seven. So I can say okay. As much as I am rooting for Kenya, which is my country, I feel like if they're not careful, Mali can beat them. 
it's gonna it's it's gonna be like the same way you know um, Mozambique beat Kenya in the last game, so hopefully that doesn't happen. I hope Kenya. This is the only game that they stand a chance of winning. I don't see Kenya beating um you know uh, Nigeria or a Cote d'Ivoire because they're not elite in anything that they do. I've compared them early in early videos, and I don't feel like you know they have what it takes to win this game. So I will pick I will pick Mali. If Kenya slack, but I hopefully Kenya will win this game. But off the bat, okay, I have to support my country. But if these guys don't make improvements, I uh, I don't know what to say about this game. So this is one of those games I'm not gonna give any prediction of what's gonna happen. Let me just see what's how it's gonna play out. And um, yeah, man. So if you guys like the video, like the video. Make sure to like the like the video. Make sure to leave your feedback down in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notification posts so that you never miss any gems I'm dropping and um uh, watch the video till you, watch the make sure you watch the video till the end and um with that being said man, I'm out. Peace.